we want to solve the initial value problem where we're given the differential equation with the initial condition y of zero equals two. Looking at the given differential equation, this is an autonomous differential equation because it's in the form of dy dt equals f of y. So the derivative with respect to t is expressed only as a function of y and the independent variable t only appears in the derivative. We can solve this differential equation using separation of variables as well as partial fraction decomposition. So starting with the given differential equation, we want this in the form of a function of y times dy equals a function of t times dt. So let's multiply both sides of the equation by dt as well as divide both sides by y times the quantity 900 minus y. So that would give us one divided by y times the quantity 900 minus y times dy equals 0 0.08 dt. Again, we multiplied both sides by dt and then divided both sides by y times the quantity 900 minus y. Notice now we have a function of y times dy equals a function of t times dt. Normally the next step would be to integrate both sides of the equation, but before we do this, to help us integrate, we need to perform partial fraction decomposition on this fraction here. And let's do this on the next slide. We want to write the fraction one over y times the quantity 900 minus y as a sum of two fractions in the form of a divided by the first factor of y plus b divided by the second factor of 900 minus y. So for the next step, we'll multiply both sides of this equation by y times the quantity 900 minus y which will give us the equation one equals a times the quantity 900 minus y plus b times y. Now to help us find the value of a and b, let's first select the y value of zero. So if y equals zero, we'd have the equation one equals 900a plus zero so we'd have a equals one over 900. Now to help us find b, let's select y equals 900 because that will make this factor zero. So if y equals 900, we'd have the equation one equals, again this would be a times zero, which is zero. So we'd have one equals 900b. So b is also equal to one over 900. So by substituting these values in for a and b, we can write this single fraction as a sum of two fractions. This left side would now be one over 900 over y plus one over 900 over 900 minus y dy equals 0 0.08 dt. Now to clear these fractions from the numerator, let's multiply both sides by 900, which would give us one over y plus one over the quantity 900 minus y dy equals, well 900 times 0 0.08 is equal to 72, so we have 72 dt on the right. And now we'll integrate both sides of the equation. Let's find these integrals on the next slide. Now integrating on the left side, the integral of one over y with respect to y would be natural log absolute value of y. But let's go ahead and assume that y is greater than zero. So we have natural log y when integrating one over the quantity 900 minus y, we do have to perform u substitution where u is equal to 900 minus y. So differential u is equal to negative one dy. So dividing both sides by negative one, we'd have negative du equals dy. Which means we'll have an extra factor of negative one when integrating. So we'll have minus natural log of the quantity 900 minus y. We would have a constant of integration but we'll include the constant on the right, so we'll have equals. The integral of 72 with respect to t would be 72t plus, let's call it c sub one. Now we need to solve this for a y, so for the first step, we'll use our log properties to combine these two logs, because we're subtracting, we would divide the number of parts of the logs, meaning this difference is equal to natural log of y divided by the quantity 900 minus y.
And now to solve for y, we can write this log equation as an exponential equation, where because this is base e, we'd have e raised to this power equals this fraction, or we can exponentiate both sides of the equation, which means e raised to this power must equal e raised to this power. So here, because we have e raised to the power of natural log of this fraction, this simplifies just to y divided by the quantity 900 minus y equals, on the right we'd have e raised to the power of 72t, and because we're adding the exponents here, we can write this as times e raised to the power of c sub one. Well, e to the power of c sub one is just some constant. Let's let e to the power of c sub one be equal to c sub two. So we'd have y divided by the quantity 900 minus y equals c sub two times e raised to the power of 72 t. Now before we solve this for y though, let's use the initial condition and find the value of c sub two. Remember we were told that y of zero equals two. So if y of zero is equal to two, we can find the value of c sub two by substituting two for y and zero for t. On the left, because y is equal to two, we'd have two divided by 900 minus two is 898 equals, on the right, we'd have c sub two times e raised to the power of 72 times zero. e to the zero is equal to one, so we just have c sub two equals, simplifying this fraction gives us one over 449. So performing the substitution for c, we'd have the equation y divided by 900 minus y equals, because c is one over 449, let's write this as e raised to the power of 72 t divided by 449. And now by solving this for y, we'll have our particular solution. So let's go ahead and cross multiply here. Let's write this as 449 y equals 900 times e raised to the power of 72 t minus y times e raised to the power of 72 t. And now let's get the y terms on the same side of the equation. So we have 449 y plus y times e raised to the power of 72 t equals 900 times e raised to the power of 72 t. Let's go ahead and factor the left side. So we have y times the quantity 449 plus e raised to the power of 72 t. And that isolate y will divide by this sum. Notice how the left side simplifies to just y or y of t. So we have y of t equals 900 times e raised to the power of 72 t divided by 449 plus e raised to the power of 72 t. So this is one form of the particular solution, but let's also express this in a different form that's also very common. We can change the form of this by multiplying the fraction on the right by e to the power of negative 72 t over e to the power of negative 72 t. Notice in the numerator when we multiply e to the power of 72 t times e to the power of negative 72 t, we get e to the zero which equals one, so we just have 900 divided by, in the denominator, e to the power of 72 t times e to the power of negative 72 t is positive one, and then we have plus 449 times e raised to the power of negative 72 t. So again, by changing the form, we have y of t equals 900 divided by the quantity one plus 449 times e raised to the power of negative 72 t. So either y of t in this form or this form are acceptable, but the second form is actually more common because the given differential equation actually models logistic growth and the logistic function is usually expressed in this form here. Before we go, let's verify this graphically. The given differential equation would give us this red slope field. The initial condition is given by the point zero comma two, this green point here, and our particular solution is y of t graphed here in blue. Notice how it fits nicely in the slope field and also passes through the point zero comma two, verifying our solution is correct. I hope you found this helpful.